Uh, hello, I'm Chris Halberg, and today we're going to discuss uh, how to make a new theme in Viewfind. Um, now that we have set up Viewfind um, in the previous videos, it's time to make it look like uh, your institution's theme and style it to be all your own. Uh, Viewfind comes with a few different themes. The, the default theme that you're seeing here is called Blueprint 3. Um, we'll get to why it's called that in just a second. Uh, Viewfind comes with three themes that are designed to be a good jumping off point for you to do your own customizations. So we're going to talk about how to switch those and uh, make your own in this video. So I'm going to open up the uh, the back end of Viewfind. So I have in VS Code here, this is the Viewfind folder that we've been working on in the previous videos on the same virtual machine. Um, I just thought a visual look at the folders might be an easier way to go about this. So right now, I am currently in local config viewfind config.ini. Um, this file should exist. If not, you'll want to make a copy out of config viewfind config ini. This is the config file that contains all the basic configurations. One of the, uh, the sections of the configuration at the top is called sites, and this is where the overall um, configurations for where the site is, what email um, address gets the feedback and the support messages, the title, and the, one of the first things should be the theme. Um, you can see right now, Blueprint Theme 3 is the enabled theme. I'm gonna switch over to Bootstrap 3, which is um, a better, uh, a more blank template for you to start your theme on. This is obviously built in Bootstrap 3. It uses as many styling, stylings as that framework um, as reasonable. And uh, this is the blankest template that Viewfind offers. Bootprint that we just switched from is takes some of the original uh, stylings of legacy Viewfind and adds them on top of Bootstrap. And then finally, the newest theme that we have is called Sandal. Uh, we do have a boot and uh, shoe pun going on. This is a more modernly styled theme um, to match the trends of the last two years or so. And there should be a brand new theme um, coming out later in 2020 um, to match the stylings and the accessibility and modern design um, practices of the current day. Another option that you have, I'm going to switch back to Bootstrap 3 here, is you can specify a mobile theme. This isn't as common now that responsive design is a larger thing, but if you want to serve a particular theme just to mobile users, this is the way that you can configure that. I'm going to scroll down a little farther to two useful things for developers, uh, alternate themes and selectable themes. I'm going to uncomment these. Alternate themes allows you to specify like shortcut IDs for different themes. So you can switch back and forth between them in the, uh, by using URL parameters. So I'm going to put on these two for now, just to show how this works. So now if I go back and I do parameter UI equals BS3, it'll switch my theme over to Bootstrap. And I can also switch to Bootprints. This is very useful. It can get even easier if you go a little farther down to selectable themes. You can actually give yourself a drop down that will make this even easier. So bootstrap three, just do bootstrap. So now there's a theme drop down in the top bar that allows you to do the same kind of switching. Um, this is also useful if you want to present to your users with different uh, UIs such as larger text or higher contrast or things like that. Um, so that's one way to enable that feature. I'm going to switch to Bootstrap and we're going to look at how themes are structured inside of Viewfind. So if you go back to the roots of the Viewfind instance and you go to themes, you'll see a bunch of different folders of all the different themes that we have. I'm going to open up Bootstrap. You'll see it's broken down to several different folders. Um, these are mostly self-explanatory. One that is missing here is languages. If you wanted to do a custom language file to add particular strings to just a certain theme, you can do that. Uh, the most important file in this folder is the theme config.php. This file tells um, Viewfind 
what customizations you want and what files to include on every single page. Uh, there's a few other op more advanced options down here that we're not going to get to today, such as using uh, less or SAS or SCSS uh, pre-compilers. Um, there's also ways to specify view helpers. I'll talk about a few of those later. Um, and also the important thing to note here is this extends rule at the top. Uh, Viewfinds themes inherit from each other. So roots is a theme that contains a lot of templates that are used in every single theme. Um, and if you look at Bootprint's theme config, it extends from Bootstrap 3. This allows you to build immediately on top of what we offer and on top of other parent themes uh, to make it easier. If you look, you can actually notice that Bootprint theme actually doesn't have any templates of its own. It's just images and CSS on top of all the work that Bootstrap 3 is doing. So that's kind of the approach that we're going to take today as we make our new theme. And as you'll likely take is that you're only going to customize the parts that you need. You don't need to copy over the whole Bootstrap theme to use it. You're just going to want to pick the parts that you want to customize and use only those files. I think with that, we're ready to get started with a new theme. Uh, I will point out there is a command line. Uh, there is a, a command prompt to, tool to do this. Um, but I'm going to keep it simple today and just make things manually so you can see how everything works. But if you wanted to um, auto-generate a theme with the correct structure and some things in place, um, that is, there's a good way to do that as well. So in order to make a new theme, it's very simple. I'm going to make a new folder inside of themes. I'm going to call it tutorial. And I'm going to add a theme config file. I'm actually going to copy Bootprint's particular theme config because it matches what we're going to start with. Save that. And we are actually ready to go. So I can go up here and I can switch to tutorial. I'm also going to add tutorial to our configurable switchable options here. And we're going to take a look so I'm going to choose the theme directly. You'll see that it looks identical to Bootstrap 3 because we haven't customized anything yet, but we are in fact in tutorial. So you can see that even though we haven't added any code, we are already leveraging all of the accessibility and all of the structure and all the styling of the viewfind theme. I'm sorry, of the Bootstrap theme. So let's go ahead and customize this. Um, we need to do this in two steps. We need to make our actual folder where we're going to put our customizations, and we need to tell theme config that they exist. So I'm going to make a CSS folder. I'm going to make a new file in that folder. I'm going to call it custom.css. You can call it whatever you like. Then in theme config, I'm going to tell you find that we want to load this CSS file uh, on every single page in you find. I'm going to just add a little bit of color here so we can see that it worked. And if we go back, you can see that if I refresh it, things are now slightly different as I've customized things. Um, I actually am going to punch in a bunch of, a bunch more code here that I will share later, but not necessarily go over now. This is just for demonstration purposes. I did a couple different things to get us started on showing what a custom look can do. Um, in particular, you see we can change the button colors, we can change the, the fonts and everything like that. All the things you can do with CSS um, are available to you. So now that I've customized the look of it, I actually want to go and change some of the actual templates. So for example, I might want to make this header full width. I might want to change the logo up here. You might want to customize your footer. These are very easy to do because you can take the inheritance qualities and you can build on top of them. So for my demonstration today, I'm going to show you how to um, override and make your own slightly customized header. Now you have to be careful with this kind of thing because if you give something the same name as something in the parent theme, it's going to completely override it. So for example, in Bootstrap, the main CSS file is called compiled. If I had named this file to compiled, 
it would have completely overridden all of the bootstrap styles and would have been left with a bunch more, much more of a mess than we intended to. But we're going to use this to our advantage right now by making a templates folder. And I'm, actually, and I'm going to copy the, I'm going to do it in the command line for ease. I'm going to copy the header from Bootstrap into our custom theme. So let me open this up. So now this file, uh, our custom header is completely overriding um, our uh, the bootstrap theme. So I'm going to change this to uh, video tutorial, just uh, as a very small little thing. I'm going to knock out to this container class, which I know will make a full width. And there's something that I need to do down here that I can't quite remember right now. So we'll come back to that later. So now if I refresh the page, the CSS will be fixed and you can see the, 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 um, the logo has changed to what we customized. It is now full width, which looks nice, but it still has all the themes and all the bits in there, which is very nice. I'm gonna to go to a different view to show that it's going from page to page. Excellent. So that is the absolute bare bones basics that you would need to customize a theme. I'm gonna go over a few other things, particularly some view helpers and some common techniques to make sure that you don't get caught with some common problems and that you're using tools that can make things easier, uh, in particular with images. Um, for this example, I'm going to replace this um, text up here with an actual picture logo, which is basically something that almost everyone will customize is gonna to wanna to do. I'm also gonna add a background image here just to show how to add background images. Now these are gonna be handled in different ways because I'm gonna add the actual image to the template in this case, I'm gonna add the image to the CSS in this case. The first thing I have to do is make an images folder. You can um, put the images folder wherever you like. I know that I like to install my fonts inside the CSS folder for convenience. Um, just keep in mind that paths are gonna be relative to the CSS. I'm gonna grab a few example files that I downloaded earlier. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with the CSS background. So um, I already included the stylings, it looks like here. So I'll just discuss them. The, the path is relative to the current CSS folder. This is something to keep in mind if you go on to use the pre-processing things like less and SCSS and SAS, um, that it's gonna be relative to the outputted CSS. So we're just going up to the theme roots and then down into images to get this particular image. Um, and now that the image is in place inside of the folder, when I refresh, we should get the background image here inside of our theme. In order to add um, images to the templates, it might be trickier to figure out the actual path but we have added a view helper to make this easier. So I'm going to go here to our video tutorial logo. I'm going to make it an image. So image source, which I'll get to in a second. I'm gonna make this alt tag. So the view helper is called image link, and this allows um, you find to find your image for you if you put it in the default spot here. So I just need to type out an echo of this image link, oops, and then the name of the image that I want, which is you find logo dot png. So this is a nice little helper that will help you find, uh, view find helps you just find the image in the proper spot. Uh, regardless of how nested your template folders get, this um, is a very useful tool in this case. So now if I refresh, you'll see that I've replaced the image, the, the logo with a, a sillier little image that I got from flamingtext.com. Um, it just takes a little bit of CSS to make sure that doesn't overstep its bounds. There we go. 
absolutely beautiful. Another common um, thing you might want to that you'll might want to um, keep in mind if you're making your own actual pages is that the viewfind has breadcrumbs up the top. Uh, it is fairly easy to customize these breadcrumbs. I just wanted to point out how it looked and how it worked. So let me open up a different folder, uh, an existing template, just to show you what that code looks like. Um, in the themes, it's very common to see uh, layout breadcrumbs. This layout is almost a global object. Uh, you can write to it from any template, and this will come, into ha come in handy when the page actually renders into layouts. So this layout breadcrumbs, and then it's a uh, breadcrumbs is a string, so you can dot append or concat onto it with anything you might want. So in this case, this is where we're adding the actual search uh, with look for here. So if you wanted to completely change the breadcrumbs or add some breadcrumbs on your custom pages, this is what you'd want to look for to do that. Um, very useful if you're making your own unique pages with their own unique routes. Um, just something I wanted to point out just in case. Another thing that I've been saying a lot is that when you change things in theme.config, it adds those files to every single page. This is true of CSS and JavaScript and all the different things that you, that you would be adding to a page. Um, but there is a fairly easy way to add CSS to just one or two pages. So for example, in our, in our header, or if we had a custom search homepage, um, we might wanna add some vendor files or add some unique scripts. So I just wanna show how that looked so you are um, aware of what you'd be looking for if you wanted to do that. The scripts look like this. So both of these are helpers that come with Zen Framework and we've tweaked them a little bit to help make sure all the paths are correct. So um, head script append file adds a JavaScript file from the JS folder of your theme uh, to the header list. Um, this is useful if you wanna add functionality to just one page. So for example, the advanced search has a whole bunch of JavaScript so you can add uh, and dynamically remove different fields and move them around. Uh, so this file is only included on the advanced search page um, and that's done with one of these tags at the top of the template. Similarly, if you wanted to add specific CSS to just a page, um, you can do it this way with head link, append style sheets. Um, you can pull in vendor files. You can pull in CSS that you just want on one particularly heavy page. This is a good technique. So that way, if you have particularly heavy um, JavaScript or CSS files, or um, ones that are doing a lot of work that you don't want to interfere with other pages, this is one way to do it in a way that um, will, it will stay uniquely on one page. Uh, you'll see this most commonly on the search home if you want to add some carousels or things like that. You'll see this throughout the viewfind templates if you take a look. That more or less summarizes um, the absolute basics of making your own theme. Uh, there are some more advanced topics that we're going to cover in later videos. For example, mix-ins, uh, which is very useful for institutions that have multiple looks or multiple themes. Um, if, for example, a, uh, a college that might, might have multiple libraries, might want a slightly different look for each one. Mix-ins allow you to um, share files among different themes and easier. It's just another tool for customization. Um, there's also built-in preprocessor abilities for less and SCSS SAS. I will cover that in other videos. There's ways to do that to compile with PHP, or if you have Node installed, there is a grunt file that we can use to make tasks um, and load uh, less and CSS files. And finally, in order to use those tools, it might be easiest to use the command line generators. So when I do those examples, I'll show you how those work and how it gives you a pre-built structure for your themes. So I'm gonna leave this up as the final screen so you can see the structure of our new theme. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to check out the Viewfind Wiki and send us any emails on our mailing lists that you might have. We'd be more than happy to clarify and cover things in future videos. Thank you for watching and happy searching.